Hey everybody, it's Nerdicane doing another review. This is Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man number 39, government name, legacy number 840. I am so sick of legacy numbers. Either go back to the legacy number, which you really can't because you broke that already, or just stop doing it altogether. I am just sick of it, okay? Um... I am also, this is the first time I've ever done a Spider-Man book on my channel. Uh, I sort of stayed away. I stayed away from Dan Slott's run uh, because of his behavior. And I have generally stayed away from Nick Spencer's run because of his uh, Secret Empire story where he turned the cap that we all know and love into a Nazi. And generally his ASM has just been standard. There's really been nothing... Um, amazing or spectacular about it. This one caught my eye. This cover caught my eye. And I saw there was a podcast and I thought, okay, let's see how Marvel kind of screws this up in 2020. And they didn't disappoint. So <laughs> we start, this is credit where credit's due. Um, Nick Spencer can go, yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, although, Iban Coella, this is really good art. This is really good art for a, a comic book. Uh, I really like this style, but it's very much ruined by the story. Well, it's not even used by the story. The story is basically uh, Spidey and JJ uh, having a... F they go on a podcast, and then it just descends into a fight while a very smug production assistant or producer a young female producer is pulling the strings in the back and just enjoying being the puppet master and th i imagine this is what being at marvel comics in 2016 was like you had these young interns and and um assistant editors who had been there long enough to about to get a cup of coffee while the pros on the inside sort of turned on each other and turned on the fans and and just completely went insane. And and meanwhile, uh, you got your milkshake. You, you know, I guarantee Heather Antos was loving the attention that she got during that, uh, the whole milkshake incident. And uh, it, this relates to, to Nick... Maybe, maybe Nick Spencer wrote this because it was Nick Spencer's event, Secret Empire the conclusion that the whole milkshake incident took place at during the finale of it and just sucked all of the air out of the room. Um, although there really wasn't a whole lot of energy or excitement for that series because we all knew what was going to happen and nobody was really interested in that series. That, that, um, that was really the beginning of the uh, Trump derangement syndrome at, at Marvel after he had been elected. But... It's sort of J. Jonah Jameson is sort of becoming like the InfoWars guy mixed with Joe Rogan, only it all just goes completely sideways because he's not really, yeah, he's the voice and he's the face, uh, but it's really this woman here, as you'll see throughout this book, it's it's her. Uh, she's the puppet master. J. Jonah Jameson is getting away from the newspaper and getting into multimedia, video streaming, podcasts, things like that. They missed an opportunity to bring in a new character. Marvel, once again, another thing that Marvel is lacking. Um, think about this. When's the last time a new character... When's the last time that you can remember a new character being introduced to the Marvel Universe? Uh, they're very few and far between. And this is sort of a, a thing about royalties with Disney, is if you create something, you're never going to get a whole lot of money like people used to back in the day when you created uh, a character who became very popular, you used to get um, royalties from that character. But they changed the rules, and that's part of why at Marvel you don't see a whole lot of creativity. You don't see a whole lot of new characters, because these writers, uh, instead of the writers and artists, instead of making this new character you know, part of the Marvel Universe, which I think would be an honor for a writer or, or an artist... Um, they kind of hold them and they, they, they keep them to themselves and do like an indie book or do an image book because 
there's no money in it. There's no residual. That's what it's called, residuals. There's no residual money in it. So, But they missed an opportunity to bring in a new sort of modern day uh, antagonist. I don't want to say villain, but sort of an antagonist to Spider-Man who does, who's very savvy in in streaming and, and online and, and podcasts. But this is, you know, just my opinion. They missed an opportunity with this. But uh, Spidey and... and and JJ are like, they're like buddies now because of things that have happened in books that I didn't care to read. Um, look at that. Look at that face. That is a milkshake face right there. Um, so basically she put them together into this podcast and she sort of knew and she was counting on it that they would get together and old wounds would open up and they would, they would start fighting again. The B story, the B storyline in this is... Um, Apparently there's a casino where all of Spider-Man's D-list uh, villains get together and they make bets on superhero fights. And there's sort of this, this really forced situation where Foreigner loses a bunch of money and then does this like switcheroo and makes it so everybody wants chance to go and steal one of Spidey's web shooters. Uh, just... So is something gambling debts, MacGuffin, we need something, a bit of action uh, in this, but I'm going to skip a bunch. There is a bunch to skip in this book because it's basically just them going over and arguing over, over things from the past. The best parts of this book, this book, like this book completely fails. Uh, don't buy this. This is stupid. Um, well, maybe buy it. Because, well, I'll, I'll get to that, completely fails to have the hero do anything cool. Completely fails to have anybody really do anything cool. This is just arguments and bets. Uh, that's what, that's what this, this is. Um, I'm probably going to pick this up because this looks kind of cool. Um, sort of a Marvel take on the Harry Potter universe, but I like Humberto Ramos's art style and I like Scotty Young. Um... So I'm going to go with that. The rest of these things in the preview, I'm just like, no thanks. Um, where is it? There's one of like, Eve Ewing is doing one, and I'm just like, no thank you. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's later. But uh, all of this is just them arguing back and forth over crap that they did uh, long in the past. Uh, they kind of glance over that that JJ used to send like, mechanical spiders to murder spider-man they kind of don't even bring that up but um once again this this manipulative young woman is thinking that they're about to fight and he comes in and once again i'm going to go back to the art this is really good comic book art this is the type of artist that should be doing uh spider-man the art and the color are really good i mean the, the physical proportions the women look good, the men look like men, the heroes look like heroes. Look at that. You guys, young guys, for you young guys out there, um, make sure you work out all the parts of your arms because uh, A, women don't want soy arms and B, there are many parts to your arm. Just don't do, just don't do the biceps, do all of your arms, which then leads to your shoulders, which then leads to your back, which then leads to your chest, which then leads to your core, which then leads to your, to your legs. Just, you guys work out more, okay? I need to start getting back in the gym myself. Um, I've lost a lot of weight lately, but uh, yeah, I, I need to go the next step and get back into the gym. I digress, I get on a tangent here. Um, so the chance shows up, this is where, this and this could have been the book. And then that's the, like, you know, you just, I just spent whatever money on this, $3.99, to watch these two get into like a couple spat. But there is, and you know, they're doing kind of an homage to an old Todd McFarlane cover. Um, here, oh yeah, here, I got this for you. Here is a, the free code for cable number one. Um, I really don't like the new, They, you know, they have this new young cable show up and kill the old cable that we all knew and loved. Um, Look at it. Look at this face. This face has no definition. He looks like the. Do you guys remember the Campbell Soup Kids? He looks like one of the Campbell Soup Kids grown up. Uh, you know, he had some rough years after Hollywood, and you know, became a cybernetic mercenary. Uh, that's what he looks like. But 
The last story, this last story is about a character. I don't know if he's new or I don't know much about this character. Um, his name is uh, Overdrive. What he does is, and I may have to look a little bit more into him, he has uh, nano augmentation, he has nano nanobots in him. Whenever he touches a vehicle, he can augment that, his, his nanites augment the vehicle to become a lot more powerful than it is. Um, so he is a getaway driver. That's, that's his specialty. He's the getaway driver. Uh, there's kind of a story, this is kind of a story where he gets mixed in with some really bad dudes. And instead of taking sort of the nonviolent option of escape, these guys choose to take the most violent option of escape. So you're seeing this, this villain character who sort of fell in with the wrong crowd. Um, is going to do sort of a, what do they call it, a heel turn? When the, when the, I don't know if it's called a heel turn or what, when the bad guy goes good or the good guy. I know when the good guy goes bad in wrestling, it's called a heel turn. Uh, I don't know if, if it's the other way around. Uh, somebody somebody who knows more about wrestling, let me know in, in the comments. But uh, yeah, these last seven pages are the best part of the book. Uh, I find this character very interesting because, yes, I'm a person who... Uh, you know, I love cars. I love cars. I love racing. I love car culture. Um, I don't love Jay Leno. I just, Jay Leno is very much into the car culture, but because of the bullshit that he pulled on Conan O'Brien uh, by, you know, retiring and giving Conan his show and then saying, yeah, maybe, maybe I don't want to retire. Maybe I'm going to come back. You know, granted, Conan's Tonight Show was not very good because you take somebody who's who has a who has the wrong style, you know, for that, and you put him into the wrong position, and now Conan's kind of tainted by that. But I don't think Conan just isn't funny anymore. Like, well, all these late night guys are not funny anymore. But I digress once again. Uh, yeah, so this is the part. It's gonna. I don't know if I can recommend this because it's a lot of. Well, you know, I guess I can. I would recommend buying this. Um, the art is good. The coloring is good. The writer just basically wastes almost 90% of this book uh, on them just having a spat. The cover's really good. The cover jumps out. Um, they're going a new direction with, with this, you know, J. Jonah Jameson as uh, a podcaster, as a sort of a, a Joe Rogan type. And uh, yeah, right there. See that? Work out, your whole, work out all the parts of your arms, young guys. Uh, but yeah, I can admire it for going a new route. Um, like I said, I think they missed the ball. Uh, I think they, they missed it on, on creating a new character, a new antagonist. Uh, but, uh, the last part's gonna be cool. I'll probably pick this up to see what Nick Spencer is gonna do with the Overdrive character at the end. Um, so that's all I got for this one. You guys hit a like, hit a subscribe. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for, for, uh, tuning in and... Go check this one out. I would say, yeah, it's a buy. Uh, I would buy this just for that last part. But uh, yeah, you guys go have a good day. Thanks. Bye.